Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Seminars with our latest episode of Millennial Who Talks, episode number 14. We're here with Matt Clements from sunny California. As you can see, the palm trees in the background. This is probably that's a real backdrop, by the way, everybody. It's not green screen created. This is Matt's backyard where he lives and plays every day. Uh, so Millennial Who Talks, changing lives with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the country. Uh, as you listen to this broadcast, if you'd like anything you hear, please just comment Millenni Who. You'll be alerted by our messenger bot and subscribe to our only our real estate show, Millenni Who Talks. Uh, no spam, nothing like that. And please share, engage, tag somebody that you know that you care about enough that you want to share this information with them uh, in the comments below. So <clears throat> I'm going to get started right away here with Matt. You want to just introduce yourself and... Uh, there's a lot of people out there in the Northeast that are hating on you a little bit because of this backdrop, including myself. I'm um, sorry. I apologize <laughs> up front. Um, I'm Matt Clements. I am a fourth generation realtor from Laguna Niguel, California. I'm in a little region called Orange County, and uh, this is my backyard. I'm so sorry about the weather out there. I saw it on the news. It's 76 degrees here. I will be surfing in about four hours, and uh, it's like this almost every day. It it sounds it sounds really awful. I mean, really, really, it doesn't. I have the capability. I'm going to add some snowfall here into our broadcast. There we go, just to make it make you feel a little bit like it's snowing. Um, so tell us a little bit. So you were a professional surfer, I guess you're never not a professional surfer, but you started out as a pro surfer, right? Is that, is that right? Matt, are you there? Ah, oh, we lost him already. See all that sunshine and sand maybe has affected his internet service, but well, I'm sure we'll get him back here shortly. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Matt. He is a, like you said, fourth generation realtor professional surfer for 14 plus years and uh, he's in sunny California where I guess it's 70 degrees all the time because I asked him you know he said it's 74 degrees today and I asked him well the summers must be really really hot and he's like no no summers are pretty much around the same thing around 75 to 80 degrees uh, but hopefully we can get him back here shortly I don't know why that froze up like that. Bring him back into the broadcast. Give us a moment. See so if we can get him back in here. Hmm. I guess right now all we have is a frozen picture of Matt. So anybody who's going to ask any questions and have comments while we get him back on. Let's see here. I'm going to put fourth generation realtor, starting with that. Okay. I guess I'm just going to talk to myself again until uh, Matt comes back on the line. So I would like to hear three or four people who are currently watching live. What do you think of Millennial Who Talks? What, what are some of the topics you'd like to see, again, in the future, uh, people talking about besides how to how to work with live video? And actually, we're going to bring Matt right back in. How to work with live video. I got you, Matt. We're coming back on. We're back. All right. So I just had to tap dance a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> I, did. I did too. Uh, what was the last thing you heard? Uh, the last thing I heard was um, where I was from, and then, okay. and then uh, I'm just going to blame it on the weather on the East Coast, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all our fault. We're having bad weather and it affects your internet service on the West Coast. So we're a pro surfer first before you became a realtor. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> yeah. So, tell, me, tell me about the transition. You're like, you needed something to do when the waves weren't hitting or <laughs> you know it's, how does that work it's funny the two industries they overlap a lot a lot 
because you have to show up every day. You have to practice. You have to have a coach. Um, you have to have a schedule. You have to work a plan. Uh, you have to be prepared. You have to have a budget. Um, the transition was really different, I think, than most people would think. Um, pro surfing is a young man's sport. I turned pro when I was 17, and I retired when I was 25. So I was still pretty young, and I just graduated college. But there was a key moment in my career where I was traveling. I was in Japan on tour, and my teammate was with me, and I was 21, and he was 31. I thought he was old, and but he was really <laughs> good surfer. He was from Hawaii. He was uh, pretty high ranked in, in the world. He was in the top 100, uh, very well respected, a good friend and a good teammate. And we were there for a couple contests in a row. And before uh, the last contest started, he disappeared. He just, and mind you, I'm in Japan and he's the only other white guy anywhere. It's like, we're, you know, we're there for competition. So there's an international field and there's Australians and Brazilians and Americans and Hawaiians. And, you know, while we practice, we're in, we're in the heart of Japan and he was my roommate. And also I had the, the driver's license. So I was his driver and we would surf all day, every day. And he was my roommate. He was my teammate. And to have someone just disappear on you was really odd. And he never, it's still to this day, he's never called and explained himself, but I knew what happened. And he had a moment on tour to where he was, he was pressured to go home by his family. And by doing what he did, he was fired from the team. And so his career was basically over. And it was a moment where I had to look back and go, well, what's he going to do? You know, he's a pro surfer. What other skills does he really have? Was he going to be a team manager for, for his sponsor at the time, which was his most likely avenue? Or is he going to be a sales manager for the clothing company that he rode for? And that was like the other avenue, but they're both capped at like 40 grand a year. And for me, that was a wake up call because I did grow up in a real estate family. So it was my dad and my grandpa and my great grandma. They were all realtors. Uh, my great grandma was even a lender. And it's, it's in your blood and growing up here in Orange County, behind me is mostly hills and I saw them all built in front of me. So I had this really unique approach to real estate and I just I just understood it on a on a, a phonics level to where it's it's part of your basic DNA. And then the transition part was mostly because I was afraid of I didn't know what he was gonna do next. My friend who quit tour. So I'm like he's out of a job and what's he gonna fall back on? It made me start to think about what I was gonna do post career. And so I started planning very early in the process. And so getting the license, deciding where I want to live and what marketplace I want to work in. And then ultimately if I want to work by a referral or if I want to work by um, any other method where uh, like through the internet, for example. And then the transition wasn't too bad because I understood the daily habits. You have to show up every day and practice. Uh, you really have to practice. You have to practice your scripts and role play and you have to know what questions to ask sellers and buyers, and you have to know a lot of etiquette. It's kind of like golfing in a way. You have to know the etiquette of, of how to get people to say yes to you and to want to transact. Uh, so the transition wasn't difficult because it was similar, but it's exciting because I can bring all these parallels of, you know, you got to practice every day. You have to wake up early. You have to you know practice before a big game. It's all pieces that are relevant to real estate. Because it's it's a, it is a job. You are your own um, sole proprietor, and in the end, it's kind of like getting to where you're, you're counting points or money at the end of the year, and, and then you're able to see your progress and how did I do this year? How did I do this event? And so it's trackable. That's what I liked about it. It's a pretty easy transition. That was one of my best clients talking. <laughs> I was like, is that me? No, that's that's actually my number one. That's my best referrer who's calling. Okay. Yeah, we're we're lucky. We're gonna head down um, to see a house that he's flipping, and we're gonna bring in a buyer that we sold their house last year. All referral business. It's really cool. So, so I'm getting an echo, an echo, a little bit. Test, test, test. Test. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got okay. you. Get on my. All right. So, I was saying, yeah, I'm still getting the echo effect, but I'll continue. Sounds good on my end. Okay, so what was I going to say here? Oh, so with being a fourth generation realtor, right? I mean, 
you went into surfing, but was it always kind of like, was there pressure from above? I would imagine that we like grandmother, what did you say? Great grandmother, grandfather, father. I mean, uh, was it, is it, great grandma, realtor. Uh, and she was realtor in Garden Grove in Orange County. Grandfather, realtor, Anaheim, same marketplace. Dad, South Orange County, realtor, and then me. Laguna Nagal, and I mean, by all means, all of Orange County. But no, not a lot of pressure. I knew that that was an avenue that if I wanted to have a career and have something that lasted 30 years, mm -hmm. that I could do. It was an option. Um, I actually wanted to be a lawyer. I actually went to law school for a year to, to be a lawyer and my best friend is a filmmaker. He wanted me to be a filmmaker with him and his attorney, his counsel. And uh, we still may do that one day, but um, we've also found similarities between building a, a home or a building and making a film are almost identical in terms of the fundraising process, building a team, going into pre-production, going into production and post-production and ultimately distribution. So how old, how old were you when you started then? Were you 25 when you retired? And then you got right into real estate, right? Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I got licensed right away, right after I graduated. And then I actually started in commercial real estate. I worked for my godfather for eight months and decided that wasn't for me. So I did the transition. Um, I saw that uh, commercial was very, uh, it was very much a box, you know, and, and did the business fit into what the box could fit. So we need a hundred thousand square feet of warehouse. We need to have at least 5,000 square feet of office space with eight private offices, uh, which means we're going to need, you know, $200,000 of improvements. And it was, it was this, this game, but I learned that the clients weren't that nice and weren't my kind of people. So I quickly transitioned and my grandfather was super happy that I did um, because it was 2003. We were in an up market. I closed the biggest deal I'd ever done. The first deal I'd ever done was I never seen, uh, I never had a check that big. And so I was able to take a photo at his recommendation of the check and right next to him. And he was really proud. And, and it, it was at that time where my mom goes, you know, what you're doing is a really big deal. You know, you're, it's, you're, you're continuing the legacy of what your family's done. And I, I didn't really register. I, I was just thinking like, oh, wow, I get, to, I get to surf a lot and I get to make my own schedule. And when the waves are good, I'll go surf. When it's not, I'll just go to the homes and call my friends. And that was the whole beginning of it. And I, I saw this opportunity to be a business owner, small business owner, entrepreneur uh, with the flexibility and then living in my hometown so I could just go surf when the waves are good like today and then build this and create this life and create this whole plan based on my lifestyle, which is based around surfing and traveling and, and being with my family and having fun. So it brings up a lot of good points there. Like in, in the beginning, you, you got into it and you didn't like what you were doing. But you didn't stick with it. You said, you know what, let me let me kind of switch to the to, to the other side. There's so many different avenues within real estate. And I think if somebody's watching this, it might be a good point for you to make that. If you're a new agent and you start in commercial, residential is a better fit, or maybe property management is a better fit. There's so many different avenues for people to 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 go into in real estate that it's it's good that you did it early in your career and not five years down the road, right? Well, without passion, you fail. And also learn to fire quick and to hire slow. The fire quick was with my whole career. And I realized I wasn't going to love it. So you got to get out. You got to love what you're doing. No doubt. Cause there's inevitable uh, dark days and hard days and good days, great days, but hard days too. Um, I love what you just wrote on the screen. That's um, probably the biggest piece that I can um, look back and reflect and go, Oh, that, that was why I lasted so far. And I, it's year 14 now we're starting. Like, boom, 14. Whoa, where'd that go? And Without so, that, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that's going to be our quote of the day so far. Like we every interview, it's great because you never know what's going to come out of it. And it's you say, you know, you, you talk about real estate so often, you don't realize the little nuggets of wisdom that you are unleashing as you speak, you know, and it's, that, that's one of them today. Without passion, you fail. So it, in the beginning, when you're a young agent, I mean, what were some of the challenges that you encountered? You know, I guess it is helpful that you had family in the business, but I would still think that still had people like, listen, kid, or, you know, what were some of the things that you encountered 
as a young agent fresh in the business, even though you had some life experience? It was mostly mental for me. I had a very low uh, real estate self-esteem at the time and thought that my age came into play, which was completely untrue. I believe most people like the energy people bring. And so being, being mentally strong and, and um, thinking big, that's a big piece for new agents is to have written goals, so income goals. And I recommend everyone write a vision statement when they start. What a vision statement is, it's really simple. I write several of them, probably three a year, four years sometimes. And it's, who are you one year from today? So, you know, fast forward, it would be um, a blank piece of white paper, blue pen. And then on the top right, you write the date. So it would be December 29th, 2018. So a year from now. And then one page or less, tell yourself who you're going to become, how much you're going to sell, where you're going to travel, what your family and personal relationships are like, how much money you've saved, and then most importantly, how you feel. And the people that get all that information in one page or less are on a really good track. And if while they do it, they, they cry or almost remove the tears, you know you're doing it right. You want to feel something and then have that vision of what your business looks like, what, where you where you travel for me is a big deal because that's personal goals, mostly with surfing. And that will lead you on the right track. Had I done that year one, I would have been way ahead of where I am now. And um, because in the beginning it is so mental, um, you have to know that you need to think big in this business. You need to think really big, as big as you can think. And you'll see the results follow year after year. And you'll end up checking off stuff off the vision statements like magic. And the first years are the hardest because there's a lot of managers that will teach you how to do the business, but they teach you the old stuff. They'll teach you like the sale by owners, expireds, farming, cold calling, up desk, you know, all stuff that's not very relevant to us today where I've learned at least in our, our world and the best type of lifestyle that I've um, aimed to get, I work for my lifestyle is to work with people who love us, who when it's all said and done, we invite them over for a barbecue. It's hugs. It's I love you. Um, that's our client. And so we've dug into the referral side, which is the opposite of what I was taught and the opposite of what my grandpa did. And so those are two very opposite ways to do business. And I recommend that every new realtor do this. Identify that those are different and then pick one of the two. I would recommend referrals because that's a long-term play. The online resources and leads, what, those are never ending, but they cost money. That's the difference. You can work a referral business and do it on nothing. I think you, you bring up a good point when people are goal setting, because this is the time of year when people are starting to do that. And it's, you know, you're saying it's not just about the money. It's your personal life. Where do you want to go? Quality of life. And I think it's you're really hitting it home early on in our discussion here about like it's not all about the work and a lot of what you do and why you like what you do is that it it, it allows you the lifestyle to go where you want to go and and I know you have um, some kids right newborn new newer born younger yeah I saw I the picture on Facebook a beautiful eleven uh, month old boy <laughs> we're so lucky. Yeah, so it's it's all about winning the day so that if I win the day, it's like I nail the day. Now I can go surf. I can go home to my family. And winning the day to me is knowing what brings in business on a consistent basis, doing those activities, and then nailing it. And when you're done, knowing that, and then going and crushing it and going either to surf or to be you know with my, my beautiful spouse and my, my baby. And uh, that's what it's all about. You know, it's not ne neglecting the small disciplines you have to do during the day because every day you need to prospect. I recommend keep a four hour window. So 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's your window to prospect. Nailing two of those hours. I mean, just nailing. And we do a process called the 54321 where it's just a checklist of what we know we need to do. And that's winning the day. And then once you win the day, now, you can, now you're free. You can go and walk the dog, go for a beach walk, um, get ready for a date, go surf. Um, and seize those opportunities that are abound in our 
marketplace and are abound for anyone that does the activities. Nothing happens without action. And, you know, if you do that, that four hour window and nail those hours, your business is going to grow despite you. <laughs> so expand a little bit on the five, four, three, two, one. It's a formula that I've come up with. So I've, I've luckily had very good coaches for the last six, seven years. Um, I had coaches when I was surfing and I had a manager too. Um, I was raised originally through the Tom Ferry system. And then I graduated from Tom Ferry and moved into the referral system and moved over to Brian Buffini. And, but I'm also really good friends um, of the Mike Ferry system and Mike himself. And so I've been able to blend these all together with my marketplace, which is mostly referral into a formula that works. So here it is. It's very simple. And we do this every day. And if you check this off, by the way, you win the day. If you don't, you haven't won the day. So you know what you need to do. But if you finish all those and you have a great appointment, go serve it. And that's the reward. So five is the number of phone calls, phone conversations you make with your friends. And these are very specific, very short, very intentional calls. It's, hey, just checking in with you, like my brother who called, Bill, how are you? You know, how's Christmas? I love you. Um, and then asking him a quick business question. For him, it's it's the obvious one, like, hey, is your home ready to sell? It looks like our buyer's going to come in. Would you be ready to accept an offer on Monday? I'm looking for him to say yes, to commit to us. But if it was anyone else, I would ask this question. I would say, Jeremiah hates, hey, hey, Matt, how's your Christmas, bro? Are we role playing? Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. He's got to spend time with the kids. Family, tell, you know, that's what it's all about. That's right. That's cool. Did you get anything good for Christmas? I did actually. Um, my wife surprised me with a trip. We're, we're going to to our a national conference in Vegas in oh. February. Awesome. You're gonna yeah. have a blast. Cool. Yeah. That is a great gift. And and while we're there, I also do a little bit of Spartan racing. There's a Spartan race that same week so it's like she's making she's she's making us happy by going to the conference and then making me happy by giving me the ability to do a race while i'm there so, love it yeah cool. you're gonna have a great time awesome well i just want to wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year thanks for being my friend and super stoked with what you're doing with ypn this year awesome. same yeah Is it, i got you on the phone can i ask you a quick business question is that cool sure Hey, Jeremiah, if you were to buy or sell a home out here in Orange County, in California, or if you had a family member or friend who was, do you have a realtor that you would use and or refer them to out here? I do, actually. His name is Matt Clements because he's, he's my guy. He's my go-to guy. Awesome. We appreciate it. And I promise you I'll never, ever take your business for granted. I appreciate that. And that's why we would send you the business. Oh, you're the best. Happy New Year, and I'll, I'll see you probably – um, either DC or Chicago. Okay, sounds great. You're doing nice. But simple, three minutes or less. Um, how are you? How are the kids? And can I ask you a quick business question? The number four, four lead follow-up conversations. So you're calling all of your leads in the morning, and if they don't pick up, you leave a message, and it's very simple. The script is, I get them on the phone. Hey, it's Matt Clements, just checking in. And then shutting your mouth and letting them talk. So four of those. The more you let them talk, the more the higher probability of you getting an appointment, by the way. And if you just ask questions, that will lead you towards getting an appointment. So hey, it's Matt Clements, just touching base, just checking in. How can I help? And then just let them talk. Three is the number of handwritten notes that I write every day. And most of my friends have received one, and so they know what they, they look like. I use a, a blue Sharpie. I write a little bit, you know, I'm doing my script like I'm right, I'm a lefty. So I do my Disney scripts and they look really cool and people uh, seem to like them. And usually I'll either stick a surf photo of me or there you go, right? So <laughs> bingo. So, and you can personalize them with like a surf photo or like a marketplace photo and tape it to the back and just, and write and try to fill up the whole bottom part and uh, have fun with it and be super personal. So three of those a day. The number two is the number of appointments that you set every day. The number one is the number of appointments that you have every day. So this system, when you get on it consistently, is going to get you in the habit of asking to meet with people. And who do you meet with? You meet with buyers, 
or sellers or people that send you buyers or sellers. That's it. So since this is this, this will be recorded and you guys can play it back, but it's it's five, four, three, two, one, five phone calls, four lead conversations, three handwritten notes, two set appointments, and then one appointment, right? Two setting two appointments and then one actual appointment with a buyer also, right? That's right. And you yeah. win that and you win the date and then you can go surfing if you have waves to go surfing on where you're from. We're, we're, we can go ice skating today where we're from. <laughs> here, yeah, there's here. waves in Montauk on Long Island. It actually gets good there. Really good. Really? Yes. Pretty scary. Yeah. So and, and just to get back to the 54321, there's extra pieces I do to that. That's not the only thing I do every day, but that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, I also add one person into my database every day. So I meet a lot of people. So I'll collect a lot of cards. I'll add the people I like, and then I'll rank them A, B, C, or D. Most of them go in as a C and work their way up to a B. And then my A and A plus, those, that two groups, there's only 120 people in there. My A plus, there's only six. So I'm very picky. And those are the people who send me the most business, not the people that I like the most, but the people that send me the most business, that's a big differential. In addition to that, I also make sure that I do something for my family every day. I make sure that I go down to the beach every day. I also make sure that I review my finances every week. And I've had dinner with my mom for the last eight years now, every week. And so, and you can build in personal pieces as you wish, um, like the mom, or if it's your brothers or something special for your spouse or your kids. Um, what I talk about in the 54321, that's designed for the morning. And then the afternoon is designed for appointments. So I break it up into the two halves, like a, like a football game or a soccer game. First half, prospecting. Second half, appointments. And I never schedule an appointment in the morning because that's my prospecting time. That's important, too, because once if you ever start to cross those over, now your schedule messes up. You've got to keep the schedule consistent. And then it becomes habit. It's the power of habit. Great book that I just finished too, by the way. Anything else? Um, when we're talking about starting off in the business and I like what you said about real estate self-esteem, right? Because I think, you know, what you're saying is a lot of it is mental that you're young in the business or you're young in age and you think that that's an issue when it may not be an issue unless you make it. Could, could you just Expand on that a little bit about how you overcame that because I think there's a lot of people and I, I'm guilty of it myself when I first started. I started at 25 and I thought nobody would want to do business with me because I'm young and inexperienced. People love energy. Clients love energy more than anything. They love the fact that you market differently, that you market on social media, that you do video, and that you use professional photographers. Just that, you're ahead of 95% of the rest of the agents. So now it's just up to you to engage them. And the best way to engage people it doesn't matter what age there are or what age you are is by asking questions. And when I teach, I always go, you know what? Your number one skill, number one, is your ability to listen. To listen when they talk. Number two is your ability to ask questions. And you have to know which questions to ask in real estate because you're driving them towards, I need to buy a house or I need to sell a home. And you need to be very specific with those questions because they're driving questions. So again, your ability to listen, your ability to ask, those are your top two skills in real estate. So what questions do you ask? If, if you're a buyer, I want to know five things. Number one, how soon do you need to move in? How soon do you need, do you, how soon do you need the keys in your hands for your new home? Number one question. Number two is, do you guys have a home you need to sell in order to buy? Because if you do, you're a seller first and then a buyer. Number three. Who are all the players involved? Is it is it just you, Jeremiah? Is it your wife? Is mom and dad involved in any fashion? Who are the players? Uh, number four, have you guys gone through the pre-approval process yet? It's a little lengthy. It's a little different than it used to be. I can refer you to someone if you haven't gone through that process, and I can prepare you what to do by getting your last two bank statements, last two pay stubs, and last two years of tax returns into a manila folder, write my new home, and then I'll have the lender come into your home or office. We'll all meet together. You'll make her or his job very easy. Then you'll then you'll have the ability to actually buy a home. And then number five, what specifically 
are you looking for in a real estate professional like me? And then that way I'm able to service them on based on that answer. And I repeat those answers time and time again for sellers. It's, it's same thing. It's, I start with five questions. I go, all right, perfect. We put your home on the market 35 days from now. It closes. Where are you moving to next? Okay. Maui. Great. Awesome. How soon do you need to be there? How soon do you need to be on Maui living? Okay, great. Do you guys have any idea how much the home is worth today? Just any idea. It's fine. Okay, great. Um, and I don't argue with them in price ever. I go, is there any mortgage information I should be aware of on the property? In other words, what do you guys owe if you put all the mortgages together? And then number five, what specifically are you guys looking for in a real estate professional like me? And if they say that we're looking for a local pro that has a plan or that has a great track record, then I'll remind them of that along the way, that that's what they're looking for and service them. But that's the beginning of the conversation that will get you the appointment. And that's what those questions are designed for. There's actually 20 questions on each, but to know your top five and be able to ask them in, in good succession to help them speak more will lead you towards more appointments. And that will get you business no matter how old you are. And in fact, the more questions you ask, the smarter you're going to look. And it's, it's always better to, um, to, to listen as opposed to speaking too much as a general rule. Somebody once told me it's better to be interested than interesting, you know, where you're asking the questions rather than trying to talk, talk, talk and make them like you asking those open ended questions. And and what I like about you. So obviously we're going to I would build rapport easily with somebody like, you know, if you can, because you're it's really down to the here's the questions. Let's get down to it. Boom, 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 boom. OK, great. I answered them. Let's go list my house. Let's go buy a house, you know, but. And I would imagine, though, you mirror your prospects, right? I mean, if you're ta if you're talking to somebody and, and they want a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more information, and you learn all that from asking those questions. Yeah. Right? It's also important to repeat and mirror what they say and do it often. So when I ask those five questions, what, what people are might not grasp is that I ask those five questions over and over and over again, so that they repeat the answers over and over and over again, and then I repeat the answers back to them over and over and over, and like magic, they feel like I'm on their side. So, for example, okay, great, thank you so much, Jeremiah, for sharing that you guys need to move to Maui, is that correct? Okay. As soon as possible. <laughs> okay, so ASAP would be like today, right? Absolutely, if we could, I'd wanna take my surfboard and be on the waves by tomorrow. Fantastic. Great. Do we have any idea how much the home is valued at today? Well, there's an online website that told me $1 million. Fair. Absolutely fair. Um, Great. And how much do you, if you, how much is all the mortgages put together? Is there any mortgage information I should be aware of when we close the property? How much do you guys owe on the home? I think altogether maybe half a million. Half a million? Okay. Fair enough. All right. Awesome. Okay, so we need to get to Maui. ASAP, we think the home is worth about a million. We have a half a million note on it. Any capital improvements that I should be aware of? Did you put in the deck in the back? or I mean, other than paint and carpet, any major capital improvements you did? No, I don't really do much around the house. Okay. Is this a part of a relocation? I'm retiring, actually. Oh, good. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. Okay, so Maui, as soon as possible, half a million on the note. Okay, what specifically are you looking for in a real estate professional, Jeremiah, like me? Just somebody to get it done, who knows the area. Like, I don't need hand-holding. Just call me when the house is sold. Okay, got it. So just very straightforward, very honest, and just get the job done. Am I hearing you right? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to be by your home today. What is a better time, 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. to stop by? <laughs> uh, 5 p.m. is great. That's okay. Okay. See you then. Bye. Once you get Perfect. the answer you're looking for, hang up. Well, this is, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, this has really been, let's see, the comments are blowing up with everybody saying, like, this is really a great interview with so many takeaways. Um, but I don't want to hold you from the waves. How, I think I know the answer to this, but how, how do you find the balance between? the real estate, the family, the 
the leisure time, right? Because right now, you know, you don't surf for a living anymore. It's more of what you do for fun. And we all have things that we do for fun. So how is it that you were able to keep that balance? I slow down a lot now. I don't try to rush through stuff like I used to. And what I mean by that is I know what I have to do every day. So there's no secret. And there's, you know, I, I do a lot of leadership in the business. If I started naming what they were, it would take the whole second half of the show. But I'm exposed a lot, so I see all the new products, and they come past me in a capacity in leadership directly. And so I, I see all the new stuff. The truth is there's no new stuff that's going to get you more business except for you seeing the people. My grandfather, I mentioned my realtor for 54 years. He started in 1951. And when I raise that first check in front of him, he died within a year. And he got cancer in four places, and it was pretty quick. He died within like a three-month period, really, really rapidly. He was 79, and but we, I knew what was going on, but I was a brand-new realtor, and I was seeking advice because I was going into this blind like a lot of people do, you know, with a dream and a hope. And I, I wanted to know what the secret in real estate was. So he got diagnosed, uh, was put in home hospice, which means you're going to die. You're basically going home to die. Family come over and hang out. So we did that for like the last two months, and we watched a lot of baseball. We, I finally got him one-on-one -on -one because the whole family, we have a big family, and they were all there almost every day. And Rich Grandpa had the big house. My grandpa owned 46 homes, and that was, that was his main one. And I didn't get a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one time because there's so many people around, and, you know, people making food, the nurses, my brothers, my cousins, people in the pool, people playing pool, people watching ball games. And I finally nailed him down. But he's like two weeks away from dying. And he's in his favorite love seat. And he has all these thick blankets. And he's as tall as I am, six feet tall, but thin at this point, like 130 pounds, very frail. And I finally got the gall after no one was around. I go, hey, Grandpa. And I nudged him. I go, Grandpa. I go, hey, what's the, what's the secret to real estate? And I didn't think he heard me. And he, uh, he did because he, he rustled and, and used all his power and sat up. And he like, basically sat up and leaned over and he, he whispered, see the people. And then he went right back into the sleep. <coughs> That's a major takeaway. It took me a while to really understand what he was getting at, but when you physically see people in front of you one-on-one -on -one, and you shake their hand and look them in the eye, the bond is created. And the bond is what starts the process. Without a bond, there's no handshake, there's no contract, there's no escrow, there's no deal. So seeing the people was the best advice that I got from him. And when the 54321, you know, there's sometimes I'll talk to people on the phone, but I really want to pop by them. So I keep you know, I'm a surfer, so I keep bars of wax, I keep leashes, I keep towels, I keep wetsuits, I keep sunscreen, and I'll give away sunscreen and I'll give away wax all day long with little tags on them. Like the sunscreen, my favorite sunscreen that I use every day has the funniest label of, of a Will Ferrell, like completely sunburnt and says, don't get burned by using the wrong real toy. <laughs> and funny stuff that like people are like, oh, they get a kick out of it, then they'll use um, or the wax, you know, stick with the best, stick with the pro. And people like that little stuff. And so it's these little gentle reminders while I see the people. And also understanding who your tribe is. Because your tribe is going to be the people that refer you. For me, my tribe is my surfers. And also all, my entire past pro surfing. And I'm, I'm getting referrals from past pro surfers who are also now real toys. I've identified at least six past professional surfers who are great realtors, by the way. And so getting referrals from them along the way, and then understanding my other tribe is my high school, my local high school that I went to, and that most of my business comes from them, so feeding the tribe as well, and just giving them stuff all the time, and hosting my class reunions, and throwing the parties, and throwing the business mixers, and all that stuff together is, is how we, get, we create this community. We have this community. I like that. Feed the tribe. Feed the tribe. So <clears throat> I guess, it, do you have more time? 
Yeah, let's keep going. Okay, let's keep going because it's good stuff. I don't want to have to cut it short because it, it's just it's really good stuff. Let's talk about leadership. Yeah, since you're involved in leadership, what made you go on to that path where? You know, some people say, look, I'm busy. You're working by referral. You're doing the things you want to do. You're spending time with your family. Why add another another hat into the mix of things? Like what prompted you to do that? What challenges did you face? And how has it helped your career? Leadership's actually quite easy. In my opinion, um, you have to do two things. You have to do the right thing all the time and show up on time. That's leadership. Um, leaders are readers. Uh, big earners are big learners. My grandfather was president of his association twice, and he was a director for 25 years, and he sat on the assessment appeals board for 25 years. And my father had always encouraged me to go into leadership. So I did that in high school and college, and I did quite well. And then when I got into the business world, it took me about six years to figure that out because I was so selfish when I was a kid. I didn't really know what I was doing. and honestly wasn't making that much money that I didn't understand that Leadership is such a big part of your community and your industry. And giving first is everything in this business. So whether I'm giving to my friends or I'm giving to the community or I'm giving to the realtors or I'm giving my ideas or giving secrets even, um, I'm, I'm a giver. I explain it like this, that I grew up playing Nintendo. And our philosophy with YPN which is a big part of our leadership. That's where it started. So by the way, if you're not a member of YPN, get in YPN immediately. You should have a local network anywhere around. We've, we've got all 50 states. Uh, we're in Canada and Barbados now. Wow. And YPN is the best entry point for association leadership. And here's why. Nintendo. All right. I'm, I love the game Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. That was oh, like yeah. my guy. Um, and everyone wanted to beat him, and he was like the hardest guy, and you had to go through this series of boxers just to get to Bald Bull, and then you get to go and like the hard guys and then Tyson. So the philosophy is I'm just going to give you the code to Bald Bull. I'll sit next to you, and I'll teach you how to beat him. I'll teach you how to beat the next guy. I'll teach you how to beat the next guy. I'll teach you how to beat the next guy, and I'll save you 10 years, and I'll just teach you how to do it in one year. And that's why PN. So it's a giver's game. We love to give, give, give. Nothing expected in return. Um, if you become a better person or better realtor, we're all going to win. And the truth is the only competition is you. There's plenty of business to go around for everyone. And the probability of me overlapping my community with someone else and having, you know, we're probably going to just work together in the end. Uh, so there's no competition except yourself and just being confident and knowing that you have to do the outreach every day. Um, that's a big, big piece. So in leadership, YPN is absolutely the best training for superstar realtors because it creates an environment of peers that are just there to help you. It costs nothing to join. There's no age limit. And right. it's not about the events. It's about what you learn during the events by asking your friends questions like, hey, I know you farm. What do you do? I'm just going to tell you. Like, hey, I, I know that you're, you do like your business 90% by referral. Like, what exactly do you do? I'm like, well, let me tell you exactly what I do. And that's the advantage from a business standpoint, from a community standpoint, the way, the direction that our, our world has moved into very um, electronic communications, we have so much value in the events that we do. And California, um, we, we were fortunate enough to win the large, um, large network of the year. And it was because we did these events that like, Every president was like, there weren't presidents that didn't show up. And every event was packed. And we brought so much value. We brought the number one, uh, in my opinion, realtor um, that just spilled out his guts to our California body at the end of the year and like was sweating while doing it. And everyone was taking notes like two hours straight. It was, it was crazy. And just the talent that we brought in. And we brought in a guy that's running for governor in California. Um, just one on one to talk. And, you know, they're all friends. And that's the thing. And now you get on the board of directors and now your heroes in the business are your friends. They're your peers who you travel with. And now I'm, I'm back on a travel tour. I travel five times a year for leadership real estate, uh, three times within the state and then two times nationally, uh, which means I'm the president of local, but I'm on the board of directors of local, state, and national. That community is incredible. So just to throw a few names just off the top of my head, 
um, in the country. Uh, let's just start with Houston. Tiffany Curry is an amazing human being. I love her. Craig Wilburn in Jackson. I love Craig. That guy is such a great human being. Matt Phipps. Phipsy is awesome. There, I mean, there, there are so many people in this country. Georgia Wall up in Seattle. Terry Hartnett in Portland. Um, I mean, you can go on and on and on. Um, friends, we've got friends in Chicago. Uh, we've got friends in, Na you know, Brian uh, Copeland in Nashville. And these are people that if you need something, you can call them at home on their cell phone in bed and they'll pick up. And they'll be happy to do it. And when there's a referral in your region, it goes to you because that trusts. My grandpa never had a group like this. And if he did, he would have dug so deep into it because we bring the power of video. We bring the power of our, the new style of media, which is social media and advertising and social media, which is very cost efficient. Mm -hmm. And we're creating these groups of, of culture and, and groups of people. And the YPN in itself, to me, is the most popular group in real estate by far. Everyone wants to be a part of it. And our events are usually beyond full. That's a great problem to have. And there's... It's such a cool thing for new people to be a part of because I bet in my grandpa's day, it felt to him sharp to where today it feels like these guys are my bros. These are the people that I count on. These are the people, you know, especially remember we went through this, we started YPN during foreclosures and short sales where we had no clue like what an asset manager was, what loss mitigation meant, like how much I can do settlements on seconds for. And these are all stuff that I would just call my, my bros on the phone and go, what do I do? Like, oh, this here, let me show you how to do that. I'll walk you through the process. Oh, and I'll introduce you to the asset manager. And, and then when you travel, like surf tour, you go to the same destinations almost year after year with the same people in the same hotels. So it's like you get to have this like countrywide, almost worldwide community. And then the roots run so deep into the ground that – the NAR meetings, the National Association of Realtors meetings, where there's tens of thousands, we're walking through like high fiving people down the halls, like hugs, like fist bumps, like I love you, you know. What? <laughs> and um, it's a family. It's it's really. We might have in California 110,000 realtors, or nationally a million too, but the inner circle is small, and we are all friends, and that is the power of what we're doing today. And you can really take advantage of that as a young realtor today more than ever. And you're going to have the energy to do the outreach as well. If you have the energy to do the outreach in the morning and you have an appointment every day, an appointment, again, buyer, seller, or someone that sends you buyers and sellers, it's going to be hard for you not to achieve your goals. What I recommend is feeding this constantly. So immediately get Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and read it cover to cover twice. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie is probably the best book any salesperson could ever read. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey is principles. I, we started the interviews, win, win, or no deal. That's one of his principles. And it's a principles-based industry. And when you do leadership, now you, you implement your ethic quality into the leadership and helping people. And then you pile on the quality of life that you've, you've created. Um, this is a formula for really fun business. And our price points here are quite high. And um, you know our, our checks are, are not small. And that is exciting. And when you can compound that year after year, that's really exciting. It's really, it's really, really amazing. Really amazing. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting neck. The, uh, the uh, if somebody doesn't have a y, a local YPN, what's some of the advice that you could give them as far as like if, if they don't have a local one, do they join the state level? I know, uh, in another interview, that there is there something on NAR where they there's a a, a guide to it or where all the are all the uh, help me out here. It's the it's the blueprint or something like that, right? Like a like a field guide or there's two pieces, yeah. Okay. If you okay, this is if you don't have a lot local YPN, start one. That would be the best I started mine, it's the best thing I ever did. Right. And 
and now I get to look back, you know, almost almost ten years later, and go, "Wow, that's something special, still living on." You know, they just got their network of the year. You know, it's like your child winning something. You know, it's pretty cool. But um, NAR, we do have two resources. There's a quick start guide that you can get um, through the NAR website, which is realtor.org. Um, if you type in the search bar YPN, this is the fastest way to find stuff. I mean, you could also go to Google and find it. Um, the startup kit is number one. That's how to start a local YPN, um, create it, and then part two, which is equally as important as the YPN playbook, which tells you how to build and sustain and maintain that network and grow it. And luckily, the YPN playbook was something that took four years to write by picking the brains of all of my friends at the time. This thing is, and there's so many nuggets in here. I mean, this thing is just Nugget Central, this book. Um, every good thought, every idea, every money-making idea, every everything is in here. It's a journal. Write everything down. I would also start every day with writing five things that you're grateful for. And slow down in the morning. What I mean by slow down is, is don't do the things that have to be done, that you think have to be done. Do the things that need to be done. And that's going to be your five, four, three, two, one. But start that off with feeding your mind and writing five things you're grateful for, five things that you want or desire, and then reading that vision that I was talking about in the morning and at night. And I read 10 minutes of a great book every day. It's very simple to read 10 minutes of a book. You know, sometimes it's four or five pages. It's fine. And then start your process. Because it starts here. And when you feed this, then it moves in your heart. And once your heart is full, that's when you pour it into people. Give them your heart. And never be, you know, too businessy guy. Be their friend first. People love compassion. People love listeners. And people love people who understand. And I believe that new realtors today have a huge advantage if they know the questions to ask and have the discipline to listen. Oh, well, on that note, I'm not even going to ask you the last question about advice that you would give to a new agent or agent starting out because this entire, this entire broadcast has been really good advice for not just new agents, young agents, any agent can follow the advice that, that you've given today. And I just want to really thank you for taking the time out of your day and, and really just being the Yoda of real estate today, I will call you, besides the surfer realtor. Um, thank you. That's all I have to say. And do you want to end? Do you want to end with your favorite quote? What's your favorite quote? Tell the truth and tell it ever. Costeth what it will. For he who hides the wrong, wrong thing still. And when a task is once begun, leave it not until it's done. Be a matter great or small. Do it well or not at all. Last words from Matt Clements. Again, thank you so much. I'm going to end the broadcast on that. Thank you.